Hi guys, uh, this is Andrew Chasen from Andrew Chasen Design. Uh, I recorded a video that was close to two and a half hours long, and uh, there was no audio with it, and that bummed me out. I was going to do it all in one take, and I was going to put it up on YouTube, and then, uh, well, the silver lining in this is it's going to force me to uh, talk over this. I brought it into an editor, I said I wasn't going to edit it, but uh, I'm going to talk over this. I want to use this video as an opportunity to show you some maps that I've done. Here's a map here and some planets and I hope that this doesn't all get too compressed. Uh, this was a planet map I did for Nova Praxis. Um, all this was hand-painted maps using the sphere rise tool which I might actually show in the video here. Uh, these maps were a little more procedurally generated for these tinier planets these larger ones were hand painted and I kind of put some uh, effects but uh, the tinier ones were easy to do kind of using various layer uh, masks and uh, going into Photoshop using things like the render clouds I think that I'm yeah this shows that here and uh, just that you can do uh, the uh, the render clouds method will generate some noise and kind of clamp this off to create continents quickly in Photoshop. It's not the best pr procedural generation tools, but see, if you're really hard pressed for a fantasy map, bam, you've done it. Say that the black is water, uh, the white is not, it's land. And uh, then I'm just showing you how you can come in here and uh, kind of cut out the. Uh, cut a section out that's the most interesting and select it and uh, with two applications of the sphere ice tool one at a uh, hundred percent and one at an additional 25 percent you'll see here uh, you can make a planet it's not great uh, and it really has this is the last step this is how you do it if you're going to uh, make a really complex terrain with textures and other stuff I mean it's up to you to make the white area look good but uh, I did that with most of these even this earth planet I just painted blobs because I knew I was gonna be painting at a huge scale and then shrinking it down for the poster and even though they're really high resolution on the poster uh, it's when you shrink it in resolution which I end up doing at the end of this video that uh, you really st see the magic start to happen and then with the sharpness filter so here's grand designer to put my money where my mouth is I'm a someone who goes around and whether it's web design or art I've been saying there's no secret to the sauce so for some time, um, I didn't really want to share with people how I make planets. I would share some other tips, but I felt, you know, it made me less of a hot commodity if anyone and their dog could go out and do this. I'm of two minds of this. First of all is the fact that uh, that doesn't matter so much because this was still an investment. I had to pay 80 real dollars. I pirate a lot of software, I'll be honest, because I don't believe that all software is inherently worth the price tag. I love this program. Uh, first of all, not only was there not an option to pirate it, but out of the gate, it was worth investing the $80 in so that I could be the guy who makes planets, not only for another RPG product that I actually wanted to make, but uh, in the two or three commissions that I've gotten for this product, I, it's almost paid for itself. And uh, yeah, here we go. Here I'm just kind of showing my Space Trouble art gallery. Here's different arts that I've made for an RPG I wanted to pin and create at one point. A lot of it is I get an idea for an RPG and then it just lives in my head and I have to make art for it whether it even becomes a real thing or not. But as a result I ended up making a lot of planets and I'm happy. Even if this never becomes a thing, the art that it forced me to generate, the stuff that it forced me to learn about world building, in my uh, mind is worth it. And so here are lots of different planets that I made and I've made a couple as commissions for friends or people who wanted a little something a, a little extra for their players at their sci-fi role-playing table 
And uh, yeah, so I wanted to show you these, show you the breadth of different planets. Here's more of a, this was a commission from someone who he wanted something that reminded him of Ireland. And uh, yeah, so here, here is Grand Designer. Uh, it's got a lot of knobs. It's procedural generation with some artistic limitations that you can place on that too. If you learn the tools, you can use it to make some very nice planets. And uh, when you're done, at the end of the day, if this was an art, if this was a planet that needed to be in a movie or a video game, you can force it to export all the different maps and layers and things. Myself, I tend to just put a black sky back there. Uh, and then mess around in Photoshop. And here I'm showing you different plants that I've done. Uh, oh yeah, and here's the render feature. Even though it, these things sit in memory around uh, 2048 by 2048 textures, you can hit render and then depending on what you set in the settings, mine go from 2000 to 8000 pix pixels, much higher resolution. The barking dog is free. And so even at 8,000, when you zoom in like that, it's pretty good. And you can say, you know, uh, here I'm, I'm talking about how the difference is, there's, a, there's two things going on. There's the fiction of the planet and there's the art. And sometimes you, because this is procedurally generated, you get things mostly the way you want them. And then you look at a particular spot and you go, wow, that spot has inspired a little story. The way this road crosses this river or this city sits here, you start to think of story things. and uh, Or vice versa. And so I like how the art, the procedural generation informs the art and then the art perf informs the generation and back and forth in that way. And so I've made a lot of different planets. Um, here I'm also showing off some of the features. I uh, I'm honored in that uh, one of the name one of the updates for Grand Designer was named after myself, because I gave the creator a lot of feedback, and he was awesome enough to listen to the things that um, I thought could make the program greater. And so I talked to him about things like real science fiction, like Goldilocks zones, and and other. Uh, spreading uh, of the the global banding or tilting or or all of that and here here I'm the only thing I'm messing with is uh, knocking this planet off into out of the habitable zone and even then you get maybe like some areas where there are still some warm spots maybe there's a large mass of geothermal activity that keeps that place semi habitable and here uh, I'm cranking things up and making them more desert-like. And in fact, I didn't catch it the first time around. But uh, yeah, if you, in re-watching this, you can see that I have, for this planet, I've said that the desert, the hot areas are more tropical. And the cold areas, and you can see I'm switching between them, are more arid. And so those are the two extremes. And if uh, you go back and re-watch that as I spread that zone out, you'll start to see the, uh, the differences. Here I'm just switching between different planets that I've made, showing them off, showing what can be done. I'm not, I don't think I render many of these, but it's just, there's a lot that can be done. Uh, this was a fun experiment. I wanted to create a kind of brain-like fungal planet with fungal people. Uh, this was for my wife. The inspiration was the colors of goth, the, you know, the poison mushroom in Mario Brothers. She has kind of a head cannon for what goth Toadette would look like. And in this, you know, uh, you've kind of got these fungal Blorg-like Blorg creatures who uh, just gobble up resources and destroy their planet. And they have these causeways across these swampy oceans. And these kind of white mushroom spots, like I said, you know, the, the poison mushroom these spots are where their civilization is and so you get these various kingdoms because real estate is at a premium that are constantly warring across these sandbars with each other this was a planet that was made for a commission you might have seen it in the gallery I painted it up real nice 
uh, after the fact. And that's something that I do. I don't do it with the planet that I make for this video. But sometimes it's pertinent to take the planet and get myself 90% of the way there and then finish it off in Photoshop with texture overlays and pan painting some things. And this is before I end up uh, shrinking it down, sharpening and all that. Some things that you'll see here towards the end. But uh, yeah, from here on out, it's mostly just getting things the way that I want it. Uh, I knew that I wanted this to just be a spaghetti of canyons. What am I doing here? And uh, so in having these different canyons, uh, I think you also get to see a shot of where I switch to the night side. And because the procedural generation rules are so customizable, I said here, uh, cities aren't really a thing, but little camps, little... Oh yeah, okay, so here I'm talking about the fact that from Earth... Looking at a, a picture of Earth with no weather or anything on it, you can't really see any rivers. You can't really tell the height of the mountain ranges. Um, you can kind of see where the mountainous areas are, and maybe I should have pulled up another picture of, so we could see Euro uh, Europe as an example. But even though you have this desert band, things aren't as extreme as you would think to make them. And when that dawned on me, my planets ended up being a lot more realistic. Here you can see the individual mesas, and so this is maybe just a really large moon. But, uh, yeah, and see there's the blue lights of all the different little tribes and camps. But, uh, it dawned on me that, you know, the subtlety of all the different rules blending together is what really makes our planet. If you look at some pictures of Earth not quite from a satellite view, but more uh, the International Space Station, uh, you start to see some the blending of the different layers of erosion and things. Uh, it's really neat. And you get to see some of that. And I'd, you'd, I, you'd see even more of it in this program if I were to beep, beef my uh, output up to uh, super high resolution. My video card can't quite handle it without just melting. This is a planet that's near and dear to my heart. I hand painted half of it and then the uh, rest on the underlying structure is procedural generation but it's a uh, chalet. This is the main human planet for my uh, game Space Trouble and uh, it does quite good. I hand carved in some canyons and where rivers would be but it's meant to be a very cold arid planet where humanity barely gets by. I'm quite proud of it. It's uh, my crown jewel. Here's another planet that's very similar to Chalet, and it's, uh, but it also has a tight band of cold and hot. You can see the equatorial waters are different there. I like how the uh, fog sits in the craters in this one. This is just me showing off planets. There's only a couple more minutes of this, if that. And then I speed up the video by about th times three speed, and the reason for that is. Uh, it took me a while to create create the planet, about two and a half hours, so uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to talk over that while it goes as well. Share some of my Alright, so here I am uh, starting with a blank planet. I've created a little template called blank and uh, I flash back to that other to show you kind of what uh, you know, coastlines and whatnot will look like, but, um, oh, and then this area down towards the bottom, uh, you can see changing the black and white thing right there. That's kind of a preview of the, what your terrain will look like if, you know, from a slice. And so you're seeing the average sine waves and square waves and whatnot created by these various noise types 
And uh, this chunky ground relief pattern here is something that I am trying to stick with. This whole thing, not only am I doing it to share it with you, but it's an exercise and something that I haven't really gone out of my way to create before since the program has updated and added various detail passes. I want my first pass, my first noise, to be this big, see how this is big, chunky, kind of like continental plates. And so this is mostly just, and I said it's a times three speed, but it's me messing with the sliders to get these grooves of these different continental plates with trenches and whatnot. And one of the things that I don't do right away, oh you know, yeah, and you can see the other problem with this is it's plates, but then there's mountains in the middle of the plates, and is that how realistic is that? Not, not too realistic. And just because I've gone and done the the different plates doesn't mean that uh, every noise type is gonna go the same way. And so I finally I'm settling on a better noise type. Uh, I'm looking more and more at those trenches creating these shells and flattening it all out again that 2d preview is very important and then I'm messing with the scale uh, and then finally the octaves and the octaves starts to break that up make it look more chunky uh, gnawed on eroded uh, and I'm constantly messing with the scale going back and forth I know that I want the scale value to be around three or four but to see what I'm actually doing I crank that scale up to uh, oh yeah to about eight for a while here I'm talking about how I get inspiration and sometimes it's from a client sometimes it's from a book sometimes it's what I need sometimes I'm just farting around and in this case I came across a new Star Wars planet today in a trailer planet Fondor and I, I never heard of it uh, even though I've been trying to keep up with the new canon and all the books, I'm like, well, let's look at Fondor. And it says Fondor is kind of an industrial planet, and for some reason they made it purple. All right. So by the end of all this, we kind of end up with a magenta purple planet, and I've taken some considerations into industrialization. But yeah, here I've got my continental plates, but I've changed the, the uh, octaves and now you can see they're kind of blending and mashing together and now I'm messing with the water and I futz with the water throughout this whole thing because uh, the land the gradient for the land height begins where the water ends and so if you turn the water off your land color changes color it uh, it can be frustrating at times, but it's also, it's all right. And so here I'm messing with the different, uh, how sharp do I want the water to be up against the land? All sorts of stuff. Uh, I think, I'm thinking that I end up liking the shape. I'm showing this is me holding down the nine key and showing how the land and the water and everything, uh, just right out of the gate affects the different weather patterns. Uh, and there are sliders for that too, but uh, but I'm really liking these darker trenches. I just need to decide, you know, how is the how is the light water colored? How is the dark water colored? And I end up changing all this. But I got my land. I have the land the way that I want it. Oh yeah, and here um, I'm demonstrating that again. Planet details versus scale. If you can see the waves of the water, then uh, your planet's not all that big. And here I'm also showing that the water emissive channel or slider can be pretty neat. Not only do we end up using that in the final product, but if you make your water orange and red and change that emissiveness, you can make it uh, you can make it into lava. And here I'm also making the hot the the spot for the various uh, for the water just a little not so tight and shiny I think here I'm talking about that various oh okay so here's look at that crater as I switch the uh, details on and off you can still kinda see it 
And the most important thing in your details is not even so much the details themselves, but the blending mode you choose. And here I'm going into Photoshop to show you how those blending modes are important. Uh, and how in Photoshop you have a little more control, but uh, here are some clouds. And uh, I think I clamped them to be a little more like land. Yeah, here we go. And I'm going to put another clouds on top. And then just going through the various blending modes, you can see how they go. And sometimes they cover up the land, sometimes they cover up the water. It's the same thing here. And so my first initial relief was actually large tectonic plates with flat land on purpose, because then I'm going to go and where just the land is, I mean, some of this ended up going under the water, but I play with all the various blending modes to get one I like, and I think that the new alpha blending mode is the one that I settle on liking the most, even though I go back and forth and I play with the other modes just to make sure. I really like this mode. Yeah. It's just a subtle overlay without you having to knock it way back. And I think I use this alpha blending mode on both of the new detail channels. Uh, but yeah, and again, you know, I could make some of my other planets that you saw. They have really harsh mountain ranges. But again, the more detail you can get from those mountain ranges, go look at a picture of Mars. You can see the difference in the terrain, mostly because of the different colors of the sediment and the dirt that's been knocked around. But from Mars is just big enough that unless you're getting a really, and, and most of these planets are, unless with this light directly on it, you shouldn't be able to see a lot of detail. See how I've just moved the light to the side and, and I'm using the shadows to kind of show me where the details is. Here I'm R, is R. Uh, here I'm liking the fact that by playing with the ramps, I'm getting some valleys in between the uh, in between the different raised areas, and that is speaking to me in a way that these valleys might be places that are easier to settle. With how noisy the current map is, uh, you'd go, yeah, this planet probably has a lot of uh, resources to be exploited, but it would be hard to settle. Uh, lots of winding tunnels and stuff through the mountains and also look at how this is just affecting the details not the major chunks so much uh, in a lot of ways as I mess with these sliders and I'm constantly doing a render because there is a slight difference between what the how good the texture looks in the preview versus the final thing I really I like that island I like how it's got a lot of flats plains and yet some exploitable mountains and here and now I'm just futzing with the colors because I need them to be better because it dawned on me again if we're gonna stick with our Fondor like planet then I need to uh, and I think that I actually yeah by the end of the video I've done a more Mars like planet but then I color shift it towards the violets and magentas in Photoshop they have color correction tools in okay yeah and here I'm showing that I didn't quite like the scale of the continents they were a little too big I think or maybe they were too small so here I've just turned off the details and I've gone and I've messed with the the scale of the continents and I'm also it's bugging me how the water is uh, I like the kind of the some of the details you can see through there like the water is shallow but in other places it needs to be fixed and unfortunately some of the water sliders are split between water ambient occlusion and relief and so I mean, you gotta jump between tabs to get things quite the way you want them here I'm also making the difference between the cold and warm water a little more extreme and I'm also trying to gain control over how those trenches are being colored and here I just turn the details back on again because it's that kind of alpha mode it's really only applying that where I had those land masses to begin with and this is a, an example watch those details they're not changing even though I was messing with the uh, seed or the scale of the main relief there and I've decided this 
and uh, this the continent doesn't change too much throughout the video this is my new hero continent I'm gonna make sure it's in the final screenshot I just really like it compared to everything else and I said the scale of it easily could be America and I kinda of point to the Far East with Virginia and the DC area and on the far west with uh, LA or Sacramento uh, I could look at that on the map and go yeah alright it's believable that that is that big because scale is a big thing and again you're kinda controlling that too many sci-fi planets to my in my opinion they go okay here's a planet here's how big it is and then you look at it and you're going well I can see all these details that if it's as big as you say it is if it isn't earth like I wouldn't actually be able to see those from way out here and here I've settled on the kind of Fondor the uh, the description is helping to educate my uh, color palette choices and I've decided that because they mention industrialization and mechanization and because I also just watched the third episode of the Orville uh, they've got a kind of shit in their oceans and made it gross and you know lots of sulfurs and irons and and uh, yeah but then I also like how in the trenches things are kind of green and so maybe you know there are these vents just burping up gas or maybe there's some important acids lying in those that need to be scooped out and uh, mined if you will so and if I'm gonna mess with the the oceans I might as well get the land exactly the way I want it and that's always just messing with the different values I talk if I hadn't lost the audio I talk about the different values and sliders and how and why they're important but not only have I sped this up times three, but my voice is on the edge of being shot for talking for two and a half hours and not not having any of it had been recorded, so trying to maintain a good morale while still sharing all this with you. Yeah, and I hope that it's holding up in the video. I know it's there's going to be some artifacting because it is sped up and I'm spinning this puppy around. Uh, the final image will be shared on the various social media things and so you'll be able to see it and uh, oh here I guess I'm not too happy with the scale of the first details layer yeah so I'm beefing it up to see what it looks like. Oh, because instead of just these subtle blobs of terrain, I knew there was a noise type. There we go, I finally landed on it. I knew there's a noise type that looks a little more like Sawtooth Mountains. That come up to a peak. So I flatten them down some. Play with the blending modes. I'm just thinking, oh, there's got to be a blending mode better than alpha, but I'm really liking that alpha blending mode. And so I futz around with cracks. I try multiply. I try add. Uh, the math behind how these get applied are different, but eventually I just land on alpha. Uh, I'm getting a lot of utility out of that since they've added it to the program. It wasn't always there, and I'm really liking it. And so here I'm emphasizing the, the toothiness of the Sawtooth Mountains. Um, and I'm always throughout this video <laughs> fighting with the water because the way that the different details layers might push on the main uh, ground blobs those continents it might sink them or yeah so I guess it's kinda good that that uh, maybe this is a little more entertaining maybe this is a better format of instead of making you sit around for two and a half hours because you can still, if you're bored, you can still do what I told you to in the other video. Uh, do like I do on YouTube and just skip around. But hopefully you like this. Hopefully you like seeing how if you are, if you commission me for a planet, I put a lot of tender love and care into it. And I think uh, I've been charging, depending on the complexity and if you need all the maps, my average price is about anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars see see these sawtooth mountains going in I love those 
But again, I have to go back and I think I end up making them real subtle because while they look cool, if they're this pronounced is the word I, I'm looking for. If they're this pronounced, then it says something about the planet's scale. And so I like those, but I think I end up making them much more or much less pronounced. And I really like that one split going across the continent there. And futzing with the water level again some more. And here is a problem I have with a lot of the planets, and I guess I need to just ask the community how to not have that be an issue, but... It seems like the delineation where a lot of the continents jut out of the ocean, instead of being nice and gradual, is just cliffside. And uh, that happens. It is a real thing that happens. But on all my planets, to have all of the continents technically be mesas and then have some details on top, uh, instead of a nice gradual... Uh, rise up out of the ocean no bueno so I'm going to have to learn to get better at that in the end I try and make the and here I'm trying down to the very decimal point I try and make the difference between the land and the water as minute as possible so that when you're zoomed out you really don't even see it and I'm also using the 3D preview down there to see and yeah I've made those initial details a lot more subtle And then soon, I move on to details, too. Yep. And here we are. And again, just turning that on futzes with the water. So I just turn the water off altogether. And he, my main goal here is to get the details, two to play very nice with the details, one. I don't want any of them to be too pronounced, but uh, I'm very happy that the second details tab was added, but... Yeah, and here I am just switching it on and off, looking at the 3D preview, looking at the spherical preview, knocking it back, knocking the water up and down, just trying to force it to bend to my will. We're about halfway through the narration, so this is looking good. Sometimes it's really just A-B testing. Turn this on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Do you like it? Do I like it? Make it really pronounced and then knock it way back to make it subtle. Pronounced enough to see it and then knock it back enough to make it subtle. And again, I'm lamenting those cliffy coastlines to the point that I knock this back enough to start to actually get some wetlands going on, which I, I like. Here I am, just uh, futzing with the water some more. Like I said, I like those wetlands. I'm going to try and preserve those, but it really is about paying attention to the very last decimal point. Seeing what does and doesn't work. Looking at it up close, looking at it from far away. And here I show you what it looks like completely flat. What what have we done with the main relief? What do we look what does it look like with details? What does it look like with secondary details? I I think it's good. And then again just turn the water on. And then again, when you do the details and secondary details, that messes with your relief. So you got to go back and you got to color, mess with the main color and get it the way that you want it and mess with how 
you only get three colors, but you can kind of squish and squash the gradient back and forth and change those and decide, you know, how do you want this soil type and to read? How do you want the flat areas to read? Messing with the emissiveness of the water. Oh yeah, and here I'm talking about how there is a large craters. There's a so forever there used used to just be craters, and now they have a tab called micro craters, and this is the ability to just add really tiny craters, which is good because again I was talking to you about how the different features on your planet suggest different scales, and so you want smaller craters unless you're doing a moon. But if this is more like an Earth-like if you look at a slow rotation of the planet Earth, you might only be able to count one or two places where you're pretty sure a crater has impacted. But and there, there, but there are lots of crater impacts. It's just being able to see them from far out. If you were standing on the surface of the Moon, like Neil Armstrong, looking at the Earth, would you would those features stand out? And that's what I feel that you need to think about if you're going to make a planet. Is you know uh, how prominent are those features and what do they suggest about the the scale the smaller the planet the smaller the radius diameter uh, the more moon like it is then the more prominent the features are gonna look but if I'm saying that this one continent which I focus on for most of the video once I discovered it and locked in the base uh, relief uh, could easily be about as wide across as the United States. So if I say that is true, then it's up to me to decide uh, what else is true as a result. How does that come across to you, the viewer? Can I, if I, if you look at that and I tell you that, can you easily believe that? And the cities helps when I end up putting that in. But now I've moved away from the craters and I'm messing just with the temperature and the poles. Uh, holding the 9 key will show you what the temperature bands look like. Uh, that's really just a function of latitude to start with, but then you can add noise to it and you can say, all right, what is it at the poles? What is it at the equator? What is it based off of uh, oceans and lakes cooling or heating things? What is it based off of terrain? What is it based off of uh, the height of various terrain features? Uh, really starts to add more noise. And you'll see here, uh, as I mess with this more and more, that uh, I appreciate being able to add noise. And then the other issue is, uh, because this is such a crappy industrialized planet, I've chosen that, you know, uh, and what does it say for where it sits in its system, but I've chosen that I want it to be, I want it to still have ice. Oh, here and I'm showing off the different global things like the Goldilocks zones and the, oh, and I mess with the random strength because I like the way that that, see how much noise and pockmarks that creates in the atmosphere. Just really unpredictable weather patterns on this planet. But I also decided that I want the slope between the hot and the cold to be rather steep. And so you can see where that hot gold water is. And that it's not... When I've settled on a on the ice, you don't have much of that cold reddish magenta water before it freezes. And the other thing I did around the craters that I didn't uh, explicitly say, but I made that uh, I made that darker around the craters to imply some sediment that's been kicked up. Here I've gone and turned the desert on, and that is a uh, it's the opposite of the snow. It tints tints the land, it colors the land based on where it things are the hottest. There are some noise functions, there are some terrain functions, there are it's based off of heat. 
uh, and tries to be realistic. I really do love this program. I've said it before in many of my posts, but I find a certain zen in just spending time inside this program. So by turning on the deserts, I needed to go and decide on some of my desert colors. Uh, and then on uh, my main colors again. And all of this is a byproduct of deciding how I want the main sedimentary colors to play with the desert colors, to read. And then uh, I decided that I needed the, uh, the water colors to be more pronounced, especially that cold water, to be a little more bloody and iron rust looking. Don't drink the water on this planet, folks. Here I'm messing with the different uh, noise types for the deserts. I like there being just a little bit of noise to where, yeah, the deserts are an effect. The deserts are a byproduct of temperature, but also some places where they're in the rain shadow of higher elevations and slope, uh, you get to also create deserts so use the moisture slider to cancel out deserts in some places and uh, yeah I'm glad I sped this up but we are almost done with uh, this portion and then we're gonna hop into Photoshop so what am I doing now now I'm futzing with the city lights now <laughs> the city lights are the hardest most niggly bit to get right in my opinion. And so, I guess in a roundabout way, I'm happy that fate forced me to record this narration, because that part of the video would have been darn boring to watch. Uh, and in my opinion, the, the hardest part between the city lights, oh, and here I'm messing with the reflectivity of the water and the ice and the uh, ground, just to make sure that those read well when the light hits them. But yeah, the city lights, they're the hardest to get right, in my opinion, because uh, there's so much going on. You have technically the noise function uh, determines where the roads are, and then there are secondary roads, and then there are cities. Cities mostly will grow along roads, but then they spread out uh, based off of moisture and altitude and all these other sliders that are fun. I mean, I love it. And I love, one, and focusing on the cities is one of the th major things that I added in my feedback to the creator of this, is that, you know, we need things like functions of altitude and functions of temperature and whatnot to decide where people are going to settle. And so I decided early on, and I'm flipping back between the main uh, color map, and this is the height map. See, this one is the height map. And I'm flipping back and forth, deciding, all right, in the really steep areas, people aren't going to settle. In the really cold areas, people aren't going to settle. I mean, they will settle into it somewhat. And here I've just decided they settle all over the planet. And, uh, yeah, I'm deciding where I kind of want the line to be. You know, there are, there are people living in Alaska. Why would they live right there? Well, again, we've said that maybe there are some resources or sky metal or some particular iron that they're digging out of these ancient craters. And that's another good example of story just being a byproduct of art. And here, it's really hard to see where your cities are going to be. So in the daytime, I normally color the streets real dark. I think that that would be the case anyway as they... If they're made out of a cheap material that's easy to produce, like concrete or something, then your larger cities are going to be dark gray from orbit. Especially if they're as expansive as some of these cities are, that or they end up being on this planet. But all this is just kind of futzing with the values, getting them quite right.
Can you believe this part's sped up <laughs> three times? So yeah, it's a uh, times three rather. It's definitely worth it. Oh, and now I've decided. See, I hate or I dislike the boring, uh, you know, uh, yellow-colored lights. If this is kind of a polluted planet, I really like kind of the the sodium lights, the kind of gray-green cyan lights. And I also saw uh, that my cities were kind of bleeding into those what looked like the water, and it is technically the water up there in the northwest, but it's because, like I said, wetlands, Those the water there is so shallow compared to the rest of the ocean, and so that's also a cool story thing. So maybe they have these bridges, like in the Keys, that are just really long, but they're connected, especially in, in moments of low tide. The other thing to note as these veins crawl out is the bright spots along the roads. And uh, again, I said, you know, I want to look at the U.S. freeway system. I think I end up messing with the scale. And uh, I'm also messing with the terrain modifier because I want where the lights are brightest are where cities are. And so the cities can be blobs uh, that spread out from those veins, but they can also be just these bright points along those. And so those are the smaller towns and cities, but generating just enough light to be seen. Now remember, less is more in some ways, so I've gone and created... I want just a couple of those pinhole lights. Just a couple towns out in the Arctic. It eventually dawned on me that I had the map for my cities. The black to brown, I had it flipped wrong and I needed it to go from be brown to black. because then I wanted to make the edges of that kind of a dirty, scarred, saturated magenta like around the craters where they've kind of carved the roads in and then towards the middle of those veins get gray and black. I think I mess with this a little bit more but I mostly like the way it is. Again, I'm dialing it back. Less is more in a lot of ways. And as I'm finalizing things, I always think of that picture of the pale blue dot. Just looking at it from a distance as you're closing in on it. Too many science fiction shows have your planet's ship drop out, like right next to the planet. That doesn't say anything for air traffic control. I mean, you have a lot of traffic around a planet. You don't drop out of hyperspace. I mean, you drop out of hyperspace a lot light year or such far away from the planet and then you taxi towards it and so as you see this dot get closer I zoom out to go alright are these details that I'm seeing yeah they might be cool but do they make sense that I'd be able to see them from that far away in that resolution and I know I know I know I know I've said it over and over again but really to me that speaks to the scale of the thing so that says that these cities are either huge or uh, the moon is actually smaller. Here I'm messing with atmosphere. The tools are great, uh, but I normally don't add clouds to my stuff because why would I, why would I spend the time making such a beautiful planet and then cover it up with clouds? So what I've gone and done here is I end up making them kind of a murky, polluted gradient of color, and then I knock them down way, I just nearly completely transparent, but enough that as they crawl across the surface, they just look like this sick miasma.
The problem is, again, is they put the controls for clouds in the clouds tab, but also in the shaders tab. And so you gotta flip back and forth, and you got a little bit of that, and a little a bit of this, and not so much of that, and how high do you want them to sit up? See how the clouds are bowing out as I'm messing with the height? I actually feel that, again, if you look at pictures of Earth, unless you're looking really close, the farther away you are, it looks like the clouds are actually hugging the surface. As you get closer, you can see, or as your angle changes, you can kind of see the shadow up underneath those clouds. This is mostly where I want it. I'm really liking this. There are tools here for color correction, but I reset those and decided I didn't want to use them. Uh, the last thing I need to do is add some atmosphere, but that's a shader, so that's pretty nice. I'm playing with these other values to see how I like them. Oh, and this is something that I'm doing. I'm messing, see, f following that curve that I just showed off, uh, you can decide kind of the intensity. When do these people start turning their lights on? Enough to be seen from space. Uh, messing with those intensity sliders are, is good. Uh, and so I got that right where I want it. Here I'm messing with the atmosphere. Again, I've already decided that I'm going to make it kind of a pinkish, desaturated gray for the program, but then when I take it into Photoshop, I'm going to get the colors right exactly the way that I want it. Messing with the fog intensity and the fog shadow in. I think I even go back and knock down the uh, intensity of the clouds because it dawned on me that I could do more to kind of signify the sick miasma of the clouds with the fog and the fog shadow. The fog shadow would be even more prominent if I had a higher, uh, a much more prominent uh, making sure to save it, much more prominent mountains. So I'm rendering it a final time and then I'm going to render it to a high resolution screenshot, which it it's this plus a little more. I'm getting ready to export it into Photoshop. Getting the lights and the clouds. Yeah, I decided to make the night lights a little more subtle. And the large snapshot sometimes hangs up on me, so I have to hover down here and make sure that it generates the save dialog, which it does eventually. I get it the way that I want it, I make sure I save it one last time, and then I take it over to Photoshop. And I make sure to crop it. But the other thing that I show is just how huge this is. This is at 66%. So, there's 100%. It's huge. It's nice. It's usable in art books and whatnot. But here I go and I create a group on top of it and I create curves and levels and brightness and I create all these because they're non-destructible and here I am clamping the levels down turning it on and off again a testing B testing that looks good uh, if I like the B but I want to I can even knock the subtlety of it down by because again this is all non-destructive so I can take each of these non-destructive layers blow them out but then use the opacity to dial the effect back down here I'm actually lowering the contrast before I add another levels because I want it to look more foggy and gross but then I kind of want the edge of that planet to have that glow and so I go and I add some more levels
Oh, and here I'm talking about curves. And so curves are important because they're like levels for each of the channels. And so I'm saying I want to boost the, the dark reds and kind of suck out the middle reds. But if I create that shape, then I don't want to do it again. So here I'm boosting the high greens and sucking out the dark greens. And I'm doing the inverse of that for the blues. And I'm getting these quite where I like them. And then again, I look at the difference and I drop it down to 50% or 75. And by having them in a group like that, I can just turn the entire group off, see the difference, and then also dial the entire group down. This, I, all this non-destructive editing is super important to me. And here I'm getting the saturation and lightness the way I like it. But again, I think I end that at around 33%. showing the different cities and the wetlands and just I like it so here I'm lo making sure it's set to bubic sharper big by cubic sharper <laughs> and uh, I merge everything I should have merged it beforehand but I'm I'm lower the size to 25% because it's e it's huge even at a hundred percent of 25% and I've gone and I've made three layers. And the first layer I go, and look at that. The first layer I go and I put that to sharpen more. And the second layer I set to smart sharpen. And it actually, it sharpens things. Looks like I decided that that needed one more levels. Again, I've made copies of things and then merged and then I knocked that down to 50%. And it really, it's just finesse. Getting it right the way that I want it. And then A and B testing, flicking things on and off, driving the opacity down. Just real subtle things. So adding this levels here, doing it all over again until it fits right the way that I want it to. It's looking good. It's looking almost done. So there you have it. Thank you for taking all this time. I guess it's actually a uh, it's a blessing in disguise that I was forced to uh, remake this and uh, edit uh, narrate over the top of it. If you liked this, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be cleaning it up and making it more about art. Be well.